official and so were you. Oh, Peter Hicks and Book Reading Club. I once Club met a session. girl and she was you. Um, I once sailed a ship. Everybody say hi. 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 Um, we're here hi, with Adam Finkelstein, Shane Hutchinson, Amir Hakimi, Matt Sisk, Parker Turhagen, and Sarah Lay. And I'm going to read a story, the first of which. And you. The first of which is titled The Foxmouth Amphibious, a short tailless by a rabbit. S.S. Easter Day. <clears throat> Any more zippers on that bag? <laughs> Shh, you're recording. Scooter my daisy hands. Who is that? Ernesto. Okay, I'm just going to begin now. You mean strip down to your very naked? He stood dripping wet next to the stump on which she perched. Well, it does feel a good deal nice, if I may be so bold. Well, Mr. Hennessy, I believe it's been far more than bold. He just stood there naked, old and unabashed, watching the sunset with this bewildered seven-year-old girl on a tree stump at the Lapping River's edge. About a fortnight ago, Annie met Elwood Hennessy in a wood she thought was just for her. But since then, she and this very narrow skeleton of a man had become tea-time regulars. Often they would raft down the river in tubes or attempt to fish upstream. But today she came upon fine Elwood bracing the current in his birthday suit. Elwood owned a tobacco farm around the woodland patch, but his brother Jack managed the whole thing. Elwood said it was time to do something important. With his alacrity, he convinced Annie that it was time to do something important. And although she were nary eight, they'd do it together. Elwood slipped on his trousers. One day you'll try it. No, I won't. And you'll like it. Annie Foxmouth's parents, of course, did not know who Elwood Hennessy was or that he was taking their daughter on picnics. They did know Jack and Alfred Hennessy, and they knew Jack was dead, but since none of them ever spoke about the woods, the subject never awoke. Why Elwood told Annie that Jack took care of the farm was very strange, for had she ever seen Elwood's house, she, even at her young age, would have concluded that she was dealing with a liar. One day, Annie took a short skip across the bridle bridge to see if Hennessy was swimming. He was. He got out when he saw Annie and became very excited, waving his arms for her to come to him. At once and on through the broccoli fields, he flogged her. <laughs> I'm just kidding. On through the broccoli fields, he flagged her. Uh, she ran at once with him, and into the dark wood they fell like two children in the snake's mouth. <laughs> okay. That makes no sense. I know. <laughs> Shut up. You want to know something, Anne? whispered Elwood. Yes, El. I'm very old, and... I'm not going to be around much longer, so I have to tell you something. Anything, Mr. Hennessy. My brother Jack is dead, and has been so a very long time since. She showed no particular surprise to this, but listened on. Then Elwood began to cry. I have nothing to do with my body, so will you make sure it's put up at the base of that tree? His neck craned, and he watched up the massive oak. As best I can, your wish will be outcarried, but why such urchins? Elwood didn't answer. He went on. Ever think you might take a swim in that crick when you're older? It doesn't seem clean, but if you want me to... And then she began to undress. No, he cried. I will not let you be so obedient to me. You're a good girl. Stay real good. Put on your sundress. The air was thickening, and so were his words. When a character on the hill appeared, he yelled like an Indian. Elwood kept panting like the old dog he was and watched the body run down. Brother, who's the lady? Annie started, but Elwood said, Hush! The grinning man was Alfred Hennessy. I pray, young lady, speak for yourself. Elwood reached into his pocket and removed a revolving pistol. Annie threw her hands to her lips and noticed that Elwood was already badly bleeding. Alfred backed away, sort of grinning. El, I love you. Shut your mouth, quiet! And he pulled the trigger. Alfred fell back and the blood drained his head. That man, went on Elwood, as he fell to his knees, would have eaten you alive. She didn't know what any of it meant. Let's go for a swim, she cried to Elwood. You go, my darling. Stay out of this forest. But you told me it was enchanted. Then he put the barrel of the gun in his mouth. On that crescent. Excuse me, I always mess this part up. On that crescent. He pointed it with his nose, and then he blew his brains out. Annie screamed again and scuffled to her feet. She dragged him to the tree and let go. Nothing made any sense. She ran down to the river and tore her clothes from her. She dove in. It felt clean to be naked. It felt real, and she cried for Elwood. And you jumped in without your clothes? A voice bellowed, but there was no one there, except for a frog on a rock. But it did not speak. She waited, just the cool water escaping the rocks. 
I understand, came the tiny voice again, but nothing were there but the frog. Did you just speak to me, she asked it. No, it said back. The end. <laughs> <laughs> that made yeah. no sense. Hey, Pete, Pete, Pete. Yeah. Before you go on to the next one, read that.